social media through the social universe and in many cases the secrets of the universe itself and uh, we like to uh, on our show talk about web advertising social media uh, and also nonprofit activities and how people in the real applied world apply the use of the social media web marketing things of that nature so it's always fun uh, to have our guests talk a little bit about how they've utilized the, the social media and web marketing to get to where they need to go uh, and also before we progress a little bit we uh, want to give a shout out to our sponsors uh, Planet Beach uh, I, I, in particular the location on uh, Berend and 59th Avenue just south of the uh, 101 on 59th Avenue and uh, also Glendale Flowers on uh, 59th Avenue and, and Glendale, just a little bit south of there. Uh, we are joined uh, with us today uh, as our guest, uh, Suzanne Aslam, who is uh, the reigning Miss uh, Arab USA 2012. So welcome, Suzanne. appreciate uh, you uh, coming to join us today. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And uh, um, there's been a, a definite use of the social media uh, with the, uh, the Miss Arab USA uh, 2012 pageant. Um, we have a great website, so if anybody who wants to go there, tell us the website they should go see you. It's MissArab.org. MissArab.org. So um, just the way it sounds, M I S S A R A B yes. 2012. No, just MissArab.org. O R G. And it is a nonprofit. It is, yes. And uh, so that means it's a non-political organization and uh, is, uh, uh, it has many causes that it supports um, and uh, it's outreach as a cultural organization and, and helping uh, 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 connect with the community and, and do good within the community. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, Suzanne. Uh, uh, what are your origins from the standpoint of uh, you know, where you grew up and uh, what, uh, what are some of the things in your formative years that might be important for listeners to know, uh, you know, the creation of a, of a, of a pageant winner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, my parents came to the States when they were pregnant with me. They came from Bethlehem, Palestine. Okay. And so I'm the oldest of four. Right. And we came to Michigan where most Arabs, for whatever reason, end up when they come to the United States. <laughs> and there's a large population of Arabs there. Okay. And then uh, we ended up in St. Louis, so that's kind of my, what I consider home is St. Louis. I lived there for 18 years, and mm -hmm. that's where I kind of just grew and became who I am today. All right, so you, you hung a lot out of the arches a couple of times, I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. you have to if you're from St. Louis. Yeah, definitely. I've been there. They're great. It's fun. It's and you lay down on the grass looking up and, yeah. and you know, hoping it doesn't fall on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It sways in the wind a uh -huh. little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit scary, but it's a, that's what part makes it a, a, a great experience. It's, a, you know, it's like kind of carnival rides. You gotta, it's got to be slightly on the edge. A little side. scary, yeah. 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 I love it, though. I love that city so much. Yeah, definitely. It's beautiful. A lot of brick there which I like. I miss that in the Phoenix area. Yes. You know, really Phoenix there. is great, but I do miss the green just a little bit. Yeah, green and brick. I love, yeah. love you know, the yeah. Ivy League feel. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have our own, our own specialty. So, um, so then uh, you went to a, a uh, smaller private uh, uh, school? I did. Uh, I went to public school up until high school, ninth grade, and then ninth through twelfth grade I went to my church school, uh -huh. and it was really little. I graduated with six other kids. So, yeah. so little. Oh, that, that's amazing. We were talking before the, the uh, show started, and I graduated with a group of 85, so yeah. I thought I had a lock on the small high school. Oh, I beat you to it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you excelled uh, in, in, in high school, um, which, you know, you're, but even though you're in a, in a small private school, that means that you have a lot of competition. It's like competing with the top six of any other school. Yes. Um, and, uh, but, um, what are some things that you felt were important as you, uh, you know, as you kind of found out who you were and went to college? What are some things you would like to share with us along those lines? Well, we were talking earlier as to kind of when I formed as an as a individual, and for whatever reason, it didn't really hit me until college, where I started to kind of question why I believed what I believed, why I was taught what I was taught, and did I really believe it? So college, Webster University in particular, is where I got my degree in international human rights and kind of where I found myself. Uh-huh. Well, that's great. Yeah. International human rights. Yes. That is a, 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 we could talk a whole show on that. In fact, we may at some point bring you back. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. We, we actually had uh, John Rowan on the other day who was uh, running against uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Arpaio. Um, and that's one of the things that I brought up is, is international human rights, uh, human trafficking, things of that nature that Human trafficking has a subcategory that's a large category 
of uh, trafficking in women, which is uh, uh, one of the causes that I support. So we may <laughs> need to kind of uh, connect a little bit uh, and when we've had some time to, to formulate and um, and we may come back and uh, bring some causes forward. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I'm so happy to hear that that's a, a cause of yours because out of, out of all the issues in the world, uh, human trafficking is one of those things that touches my heart a lot more than most. Absolutely. It, it's so... Um, some of the causes I support, I will watch some of their videos and then I can't sleep for a month. Um, it just upsets me so much and you know we go uh, throughout our day to day and we'll talk about this in some of the later segments of some of the things that are near and dear to you. Um, but um, that, that it, we think that, we don't, we don't think that's the point, is that we, we don't realize there's all this going on, we don't want to know that all this is going on and we want to act like the hardest thing to, uh, each day is to choose what to wear and what we're going to eat for breakfast and if we're going to gain weight from it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they say ignorance is bliss. So <laughs> yeah, I, I hate to think that way, but... Yeah, there's a lot more than they should. So what are some things in college that, that you found out about yourself that you felt were, you know, really kind of helped you define who you are? Ah, well, um, when I was starting to pick my major, I honestly had no idea what I wanted to study. Um, I didn't want to teach, I didn't want to be a doctor, I didn't want to be, a, I, I really had no idea. And I stumbled upon the International Human Rights Program and um, growing up as a Middle Easterner, politics are really a part of your daily life every day. So um, you kind of grow up with, well I personally grew up with this sense of justice, mm -hmm. just it's always in my head. And so international human rights just kind of made sense. And I didn't really know what I was going to do with it or where I was going to go with it or why I even wanted it other than I just believed in justice so much. So um, I picked that major and from there I kind of, well, this whole world opened up. You, you know, you grow up as a Palestinian just thinking about Palestinian issues. But oh my God, I found, about, I found out about human trafficking and I found out about child soldiers in northern Uganda, which was kind of where, it, that was my catalyst really for everything that I've done in the nonprofit world was finding out about child soldiers in northern Uganda and that was that was the, my inspiration and that was the where you said you know you find out about something and you can't sleep and yeah. that was that was it for me and from that moment on I I think the reason it was so inspiring is because the organization Invisible Children that talks about child soldiers in northern Uganda it mm -hmm. was is stemmed from three college kids three young guys uh -huh. and I just saw the power of young people and that if we're rallied together we really can make change and that inspired me so much and I realized I'd have to wait till I was 35 and a politician to do anything that is absolutely that's mm -hmm. true um i felt the same way i actually thought i was going to become an amazing politician but uh, uh anybody who gets up to the top i have a lot of respect for them if they don't lose their soul along the way um exactly. it, actually i felt the pressure from that and i said you know what? i'm going to be who i am and decided not to get into politics because i get i want to do work more in the grassroots level where i can yes. actually have an impact and um, that's part of what this is all about is being able to to uh, uh talk on the ground floor and and uh, uh champion causes. Yes. Uh, now, of course, if I were a heavy politician, I would feel like I would be more powerful, but sometimes you get your wings clipped and you can't. Mm -hmm. There's causes you want to support that you can't. So I commend you for, uh, for that as well. Okay. Um, so when, um, let's see, we still have, okay, good. We still have a, a few more minutes before break that we can talk a little bit more. Um, what were some things that you discovered in, um, in college that um, they kind of uh, along uh, not only your major but where there's some other things that uh, uh, that are going to because later on we're going to talk about where you want to take this whole thing that not only the year of of uh, uh, representing the, the Miss RBSA pageant, um, but um, where you want to go. So you have some acting. So where did that, um, where did that kind yes. of, was there any stepping stones that happened in college that led you into the acting world? Actually, yes. Um, I never acted before. I did, you know, the occasional church play. Uh -huh. But, and then for whatever reason, Jeannie Florini and Chris Stevens, these two important people in my life that were my professors at the community college I went to before I went to Webster University, they uh, had me take a class that, um, did children's plays and we we did a play and then we traveled around to local schools and we did the play in front of children and I realized how much I love being on stage and it was this high that you kind of get from it and I was I also realized I was kind of good at it yeah so um we, we've seen a little bit about yeah. that in fact uh, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break and uh, when we come back from break we're going to talk a little bit more about what uh, Suzanne has done in the acting side and a little bit more about her accomplishments so we, we look forward to catching up with you after the break don't go away